Oh, hey friends, it's Greg with Laramore Studios. And if you had all of your equipment stolen, what camera equipment would you buy? Well, back in February, that happened to us and we had to reset our entire kit. This video is all about what's in our bag or our bag and cases. Let's jump right into it. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Let's first talk about the cases. I got two Pelican cases for the main cameras and lenses, and then a camera backpack like the one we had stolen before. But with the Pelicans, this time we went with tan ones because they stand out a little more and they could be more signified as ours, whereas black, almost everyone has those. Let's take a look in the first case. This one is the Blackmagic camera case. We have a Blackmagic Pocket 4K cinema camera and that one has the ability to put 15 millimeter rods on the bottom. We also have a second one. They're both in a half small rig cage, which works really well for us. We went with this top handle from small rig. We had another one before that was all metal and it really wasn't comfortable. And this one is a little more expensive, but it has the wood grip on the bottom. So we've really liked that one. It's used on a NATO rail. We have SSD drives, because this camera can record straight to SSD, which is one of our favorite things about it. Each of these are about 100 bucks for a terabyte, which is amazing. Then we just have some of the different, this is for V-mount battery, hooks onto our rig. This is another V-mount battery for the other one. We also have some 15 millimeter rods that are carbon fiber. These are about 12 inches, and we also have some 18 inch ones. We have the small rig tool. This comes in handy. We have a couple of these SSD drive holders that go on top of the rig. We have some different variety of cables to go to the hard drives. We have power source. We have another one of these SSD. This pocket really needs to be worked on. I haven't figured out the best way. We may do some storage on the top here. I like the foam because it keeps it a little more protected, but this is just sort of a cluster right now with some random stuff, some screws, some different tools and cables. And the last thing we have in this case is this Tilta mat box. This one has a little carbon fiber shade that can go on top. It also has the ability to do different filters that can be pulled in and out. I just like it a little bit better than the small rig one. It just feels a little bit better quality. Let's jump to the next case. In this second Pelican, it's primarily our lenses and batteries. So let's open it up and let's talk about lenses first because that's a pretty exciting topic. So we went with the Mikey, I don't know how to pronounce it, full frame cinema lenses. A buddy of ours, Madison Dyer, who we had on the podcast a while back, is a DP and he really likes these and they're pretty solid bang for their buck. A lot of our lenses that we had before were actually photo lenses. And so these are actually cinema lenses. They have the gears built into them, but it is a little different getting used to those when you had super, super sharp photo glass. Cinema lenses are a little softer. I've been super happy with them so far. We got the 35, we got the 50 mil, and we got the 85 mil. And these are all $1,000. You can get the 24 millimeter, you can get 105. There's other ones, but outside of this range, they all go up to like $1,200 a lens maybe. And for what we needed at this point, we figured this would be pretty solid. The next one is the Canon EF 100 millimeter macro L series lens. Now this is an upgrade for us. We had the 100 millimeter macro from Canon before, but it wasn't their L series and so we've been enjoying this so far. And lastly, we went with the Leowa 12 millimeter rectilinear lens. And so if you don't know what that means. Essentially, this is a lens that's supposed to have zero distortion and allow you to get a super wide shot without having as much distortion or vignetting in the corner. We actually haven't used it much yet. Some of our clients and stuff we do has to do with commercial construction and getting real wide shots on the gimbal can be super beneficial. This would be great for real estate as well. The main lenses that I feel like we're kind of missing at this point, we used to have the Canon EF 70-200, to but 
We didn't replace that one primarily because it's a really expensive lens, but I've found that in certain situations, having a long zoom lens is super helpful. And so at this point, we just rent it. I'm trying to figure out what we want to do for that longer focal length when we need to get a little more zoom and go in and out. So we'll probably have to do something in that range or we'll just keep renting it because we don't need it in our day-to-day -day shoots. Now, one of the things I wanna mention about the lenses is that I went with all EF mount glass. I wanted to do that because outside of PL, this is one of the most common mounts and you can easily adapt it to a lot of cameras. One of the cameras that we're considering purchasing in the future is the Red Komodo or the Red Komodo X. And that one has an RF mount, but it's easily adaptable to EF. And so we could see these being used for a long time. And when you buy glass, you wanna buy something that you're gonna use for a long time, not have to change with every single camera that you purchase. One of the things that we invested a little more this round after stuff was stolen was with this Tilta manual follow focus. When we had the small rig one, it was like $100. I think this one is like seven or $800 new. We were able to get it used. When we had the other one, it just didn't feel nearly as smooth, especially on these full frame cine lenses. It didn't feel like you were precise. You'd feel a little bit of bump and maybe that was just the copy that I had. But this one is just so smooth. It fits on two 15 millimeter rods and it's just locked in and works great. The last things in this case are all about batteries. We have a battery charger for some Sony NPF batteries, I believe, that go for our audio recorder and stuff like that. We have a dual V-mount charger. And then right now, one of our V-mounts is on our monitor that we're using for filming this. But we have one small rig V-mount battery, and then we have three of these Hypercore Neo 99s, and these V-mount batteries have been a mainstay for us. We had them before we were robbed and we repurchased them. Let's move to the next case. All right, and lastly, we have our camera backpack. This was one of those things that after it was stolen, I realized that I just really liked it. There's obviously been lots of backpacks that have come out since that may be better, but I loved the color of this. I really enjoyed how it functions. I love the flip side. I love that it opens on the back not on the front, which a lot of camera backpacks do. But half of this purchase was just literally for nostalgia's sake. I just enjoyed having it. I had it for maybe five years, six years. And so we rebought it. In here, you're gonna notice there's a couple holes in here where things aren't. And that's because we're filming on the camera right now. We have the Panasonic S5 2X and the Panasonic 50 millimeter 1.8 lens currently that we're using to film this on. And like we also mentioned in our video, we have the 85 millimeter 1.8 lens from Panasonic as well. Because these are sort of our hybrid photo video camera and lenses kit, we always had that in a backpack and it's just worked well, so that's why this is in here. All right, a few other things that are in here. We have this color checker passport. These are almost a couple hundred bucks. They're pretty expensive, but if you wanna be able to get some good color, be able to match cameras, this can really come into play, be helpful. We have a bunch of step up and step down rings. This is helpful for when we have filters that are used for both our larger lenses and the smaller filter lenses. We have this EF adapter, and this is from the Panasonic L-mount to our EF glass, so it'll allow us to use all of our cinema lenses on the Panasonic. You can see it's a really nicely written Panasonic EF adapter on there. That is definitely not custom. It totally came this way. And then we have a staple SD card holder. I think it's nice to have something secure to hold all the SD cards. Next, we have the GoPro Hero 11 that we just recently purchased. And the main reason we got this is because we're starting to do some videos with my family for another side YouTube channel that's gonna be all about building adventure uh, with kids and having a family. And so we wanted something that was a little small, easy, just point and click basically 
kind of camera. And so, so far we've been enjoying it and that's been helpful. And then I just bought for that, this little off-brand case that has batteries. It's a battery charger. It's also a SD or micro SD card reader just to keep the batteries. I don't know about you guys, but I hate having to plug a camera in to charge the battery. Panasonic with the S5 2X, you could have put a charger in the box. I know you're cheaper than a lot of the competition. Just throw a charger in there. And then we have a couple different brands and types of variable neutral density filters for our cinema lenses. We have a variable ND that fits on the size for this Panasonic camera. And so that's primarily what's inside. And then we have one of those little blowers. This has been super helpful anytime you're using especially a mirrorless camera, just to have the ability to blow off the sensor real quick, make sure you don't have any of those dust spots. That always levels up your footage. And then in the front side is basically just some batteries for the Panasonic, some chargers, just some little things we need. So to end this video, I just wanted to give a little insight on why we went with the cameras we went with and what we're thinking for the future. We first off went straight with those two Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K bodies. Because we've used them before, we had one of them. We know they match well together, especially with the Cinema Prime lens kit, but it wasn't an everything camera. And ultimately we just needed to be shooting again quickly. Now for us, a lot of the times when we're doing gimbal work, we really like to use a mirrorless camera just cause it's so much simpler to put on the gimbal. It's lighter, you can do some autofocus. So when we like to move with a person and sort of have the camera tracking their eye. And so that's one of the reasons we went with the Panasonic S5 2X. If you wanna watch our other video, which is all about why we switched from Sony, which we have an A7S III and an A7 III, to the Panasonic, you can watch that there and that'll give you some more insight. But as we move forward, we do wanna find what is that next camera. We just had a shoot a couple nights ago, we were shooting the Red Komodo and we used that on a pickleball product video. Super stylized, uh, we're excited. We should be able to share some about it soon. But I was really stoked with not only the image straight out of camera, just putting the red IPP2 LUTs on it, but overall using it, it's a smaller form factor. We've been using the Red V Raptor on some shoots recently with a director of photography. And though it's an amazing camera, amazing image, you really have to have it built out a bit more. And with the Red Komodo, it's a bit smaller. And so, Obviously right now we don't really want to spend that extra amount of money. And now that the Red Komodo X came out, that's another four grand that we'd have to spend if we want to get those higher frame rates and a few other benefits that that has built into it. But yeah, this is our kit. This is what we're using day to day right now. And then we're just renting stuff that we need. The main thing that we haven't replaced or haven't purchased yet is an on-camera monitor. And I keep going back and forth with, do I invest in the small HD and get something that will work with all cameras I wanna use moving forward? Or do I go a little cheaper? That I'm not sure yet. So hopefully we'll create a video as we navigate that soon. Thanks so much for watching this video. Check out one of these over here. You can learn about the Panasonic and why we chose that camera, as well as watch one of our podcast episodes. And let us know if you have any questions about our kit, if there's specific things you'd like to see a review of, and let us know down in the comments. We'll see you next time.